The 16-core Ryzen 3950X plugs directly into a mainstream socket motherboard, meaning that you could potentially install the CPU into a seriously tiny case. But how small can you realistically go before thermals become a serious issue? AMD do not include a CPU cooler for this one, so it really is up to you to decide how much cooling your build requires. Now we've done testing with this CPU with a 240 and a 280mm AIO, and thermal performance there has been pretty good, but what about something a lot smaller? How about a Noctua NH-L12S, which is only around 70mm tall, or maybe even something like a 92mm AIO? How low can you really go before thermals become a big problem? And when you do reach that point, what are your options in terms of reducing those thermals? So consider this video a bit of a sanity check when it comes to using the Ryzen 3950X in small form factor PCs, where you are limited with CPU cooling. So I wanted to test this for myself, seeing as I had seen a few builds out there online somewhat bragging about how they had installed a 3950X into an insanely tiny build. I will say that is a bit of a weird flex, seeing as the physical installation of the CPU here is just like any other Ryzen CPU. The difficult part comes in the form of manually tuning the CPU in terms of power and voltage, and that's something that some of these users and builds seem to skip altogether. Now, if CPU cooling in your mini Ryzen 3950X build is truly insufficient, and I mean insufficient in the sense that you're hitting you know, 90 degrees C quite frequently, then you're not only going to see much reduced boost clocks, but you're also going to see a you know reduced lifespan of your processor uh, overall. Now, I don't have any statistics to back that up, but when the CPU is cooling and warming up to that point as well over many cycles, then that is the common result of how these processes end up dying. The task of this video is to find out at what point that cooling becomes insufficient. For example, is it unreasonable to think that we could use a 70 mm Noctua cooler with this CPU? Now, some of you may be wondering how AMD were able to cram 16 cores into a mainstream socket CPU in the first place, and also why it runs a lot cooler than expected. The primary reason is the 142 watt power target that the 3950X is restricted to at stock, meaning that the amount of power that is lost in the form of heat is also restricted. Not only that, but that amount of power is spread over the 16 cores, so when you consider the amount of heat that each core is producing, it's not not a whole lot. If an 8-core Ryzen 3700X, on the other hand, was running at the same 142-watt power target, you now have twice the amount of power per core, and that would probably set the processor on fire. That's why the 3700X runs at an 88-watt power target, which is still more power per core than the 3950X. When you pair that with cherry-picked CPU cores that you can run at very low voltages, we get some pretty decent boost clocks at that power target as well. Now, usually CPU thermals depend heavily on which motherboard you're using, seeing as CPU voltage varies greatly among different boards, but seeing as the 3950X will pretty much be hitting that 142 watt power target on every board, I would expect fairly close thermal performance all around. And just to recap the current state of undervolting the Ryzen 3950X, or all third gen Ryzen CPUs for that matter, you'll still experience the odd decreased performance despite everything looking stable and fine. So if you're setting a manual voltage for the CPU but not modifying its frequency, the processor will take things into its own hand and decrease performance without any monitoring tools being able to pick this up. For those wanting to set manual voltages and frequencies, that does work as expected. Technically, this is just overclocking. Here's a look at what you can expect roughly when using a fairly solid X570 motherboard. You can also dip below 4.1 and try 4.0 0 and 3.9 if you really like because you will be able to obtain some pretty solid thermals there. Just expect a decrease in performance. A couple of notes on the thermal testing here. Usually when testing CPU cooler performance, I would also lock the processor's frequency and voltage, but here I've left the Ryzen 3950X completely stock, free to boost and regulate as much as it wants. The reason for that is that although we are measuring CPU temperature here, we're also monitoring the CPU clock speeds and see how much that gets affected by running a low profile CPU cooler. All testing was done on an open test bench and this is something that is not negotiable. There is simply no case out there that I could choose that would make everyone happy and that would give a one size fits all result. Different cases affect coolers in different ways and at the end of the day here we are testing coolers, not cases. If 
you want to know how these coolers perform in cases, add anywhere between 5 to 15 degrees C. But before we jump into the testing for a few different coolers, I wanted to explore some existing options out there for reducing the thermals of the Ryzen 3950X. So just so we're not confused by these three graphs here, because I can understand they can be overwhelming at first. On the left, we have the CPU temperature. In the middle, we have the CPU package power. And then on the right, we have the CPU frequency. This result is during a 25 minute blender render using the 240 mil Kraken X53 set at 1500 RPM. So in orange, we have the pretty typical stock performance. The 3950X settles in at around 60 degrees C. The package power is right up against that 142 watt target. And the CPU frequency hovers at around four gigahertz flat for all cores. When we enable the eco mode found in the Ryzen master software, we can see that we get an absolutely huge reduction in thermals with the 3950X sitting at around 45 degrees C. The trade-off here, of course, though, is reduced performance. The power target now sits at just 87 watts and the clock frequency is a bit sporadic, but for the most part, it sits at around 3,500 megahertz. So a pretty massive thermal reduction, but it will come at a cost of lower performance. Now in Ryzen Master Software, you can actually set your own custom power target for the CPU to run at instead of the default 142 watts. And here I wanted to see what would happen if I told the CPU to run at a power target of 120 watts instead. Here we get around a 5 degree C drop from stock. We can also see that the power target is confirmed at around 120 watts and the boost clock seem to be roughly 90 megahertz lower than stock. So we do get lower performance, that's kind of what you expect, but on the bright side this does seem to be a pretty effective way to just tell the CPU, hey, pull a little bit less power, run a bit cooler, and you do the rest. The 3950X will kind of just make up its own mind on what voltage and boost clocks it thinks are suitable at that power target. But now let's jump into testing a few different ITX sized CPU coolers and we already know that a 240mm cooler seems to get the job done quite well. But what about a 120 mil cooler? Here we see a thermal increase of around seven degrees C and also a clock speed reduction of 50 megahertz. Again, add anywhere from five to 15 degrees C to account for what this thermal performance would be like inside a case. Here that would land us at around 75 to 80 degrees C. But what if we go even smaller, say a 92 mil AIO? This is the Acertec 645LT and if the Ryzen 3950X can run on this, then that means that you could potentially build a 16 core system inside the tiny Den A4 SFX. Do note I have tested this with the Noctua Slim 92mm fan, seeing as that's how this cooler is intended to be used. So here we get another thermal increase, this time raising the CPU temperature up to 75.8 degrees C after 25 minutes in Blender, and the clock speed sees another 50 megahertz reduction. Positioning this liquid cooler inside the Dan A4, things are pretty restrictive in terms of airflow. It is mounted underneath the power supply, so I'd expect thermals there to be at least in the high 80s under the same load. But now let's try some low profile air coolers as this would open up some slimmer case options and let's start with Noctua's NHL12S. This is a surprisingly powerful low profile cooler with the height coming in at 70 millimeters and Noctua claim that this can cool CPUs with a TDP of 105 watts and above and taking a look at the thermal result, I'd say that recommendation seems about right. Thermals here are slightly better than our 92mm Acetec 645LT and boost clocks seem around 40 megahertz higher in Blender. So the NHL12S can cool this CPU, but you'll again want to make sure that your case has enough airflow. For example, if you're planning on squeezing this CPU cooler into the Ghost S1, you'll probably want to add some top or bottom mounted exhaust fans. But let's step things up a notch and take a look at something even smaller, like the Cryorig C7G. This cooler comes in at 47 millimeters in height and has a claimed TDP rating of 125 watts. That's greater than the TDP of our Ryzen 3950X at 105 watts, so this little thing should be quite capable. And surprisingly, it actually is. We are getting very warm temperatures at this point though, with the processor averaging 87.2 degrees C in the final two minutes, and boost clocks take yet another hit. We're now just at 38.30 megahertz for all cores. While this is technically doable on an open test bench, if you're this limited in CPU cooling, this is the point that you'll want to start setting your own power target
target in Ryzen Master Software. I think a power target of around 105 watts or thereabouts would work quite well here. And finally, let's see what happens when you strap on a cooler that's only 37 millimeters in total height, Noctua's NHL9A. This is actually the smallest CPU cooler that I have here for testing, but one thing to note is that this should technically perform better than the Intel version, the L9i, as the heatsink is a bit larger. And believe it or not, we can actually get through a full 25 minute render with this cooler, although it isn't pretty. We're now 200 megahertz down from our result with the 240 mil Kraken X53 and about 30 degrees warmer. You would definitely need to lower the power target down to around 100 watts or so, just like with the Cryrig C7G. So a couple things to note here. Third gen Ryzen CPUs are pretty incredible in how they can regulate their own power consumption and performance to manage their own thermal. Instead of attempting to boost all cores to 4 GHz all the time, you're able to run limited CPU cooling solutions with the trade-off of lower performance. This is similar performance and temperature scaling to what you would expect from a GPU, especially from Nvidia. For the 3950X, I personally wouldn't go any lower than the Acetec 645LT or Noctua L12S without modifying the power target of the CPU, and even then, you'll need to make sure that those coolers have plenty of access to airflow. Still though, I think it's pretty mind-blowing that you can run this 16-core CPU through a blender render with just a 37mm cooler attached, even if it is on an open test bench. Ideally, of course, I think a 240mm liquid cooler would probably be the sweet spot for the 3950X, as that gives you plenty of headroom for decent thermal performance and even overclocking. So let me know your thoughts and comments down below, certainly some surprising results, and if you do currently have a Ryzen 3950X in your own system, I'd love to know what cooling solution you're currently using and how your experience has been with it so far. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.